welcome. Thank you. Cheers. Very good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. The most unusual Christian name I've ever come across. Yeah, it's actually Hawaiian. Um, my mum's from the Philippines. I don't know why I have a Hawaiian name, but it's always been wrong through school. No one can ever pronounce it. Now we're seeing it again through social media. And I think it's really important that we understand how big social contagion is. I worry about my friends, children and their future and, you know, people like you who have fought for our freedoms and then to have our freedoms just taken away and people go along with it. I thought I was the only one, then maybe it can build a bigger group of people that will stand up and say like, no, you know, this isn't right. It brings us to where we are today. And if it brings you to the point where you can stand up and fight for the kit, then you've led a bloody good life. Lilani, how absolutely wonderful to share a part of Christmas, which is, I think, is a very special time of year with your wonderful self. No, thank you for having me on. No, I really love this time of year. Even, you know, I'm not really a religious person or anything, but it's just to me, it's all about, you know, family, friends, getting together and enjoying each other. So, yeah, it's it's lovely to be here with you. Yes, and it's... um. It's also a bit of a break, isn't it, from this nonsense that's occupied our minds because we, we're caring people. You know, we care about the future of the kids and you've been incredibly vocal in standing up to this nonsense. You've been on every blimmin' show out there imaginable. Well, probably not the... <laughs> probably not the, 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 not the, the BBC! The, yeah, well, that, and that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. And um, and I, I just want to start by saying thank you for everything you've done for my son, you know, because it takes a real hero to stand up to these monsters. Thank you. No, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? It's about the future. I don't have children myself, but I worry about my niece. I worry about my friends' children and their future and, you know, people like you who have fought for our freedoms and then to have our freedoms just taken away and people go along with it. It's just, it's mind-blowing to me. And, you know, I feel like if a few people can just stand up and say, look, this is wrong, and other people can see them and say, oh, I feel the same way, but I... I thought I was the only one, then maybe it can build a bigger group of people that will stand up and say, like, no, you know, this isn't right. Yes, definitely. And um, I think something else that's come off the back of this is that a lot of people were saying, you know, my friends don't understand me. <laughs> I was like, it's probably because they're not your friends, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know. People that love you, listen to you, and even if they don't agree with you, they, they they at the very least listen. But it's almost like this kind of, um, it's like a mental condition where people are just like, no, stop, stop. I, I'm, I, I'm not prepared to hear it. Stop. Yeah. And, and I, it made me question some of my relationships with people. And these were friends I've had a very, very long time because i thought do you know what like I, I in a friendship i want you to listen to me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah no you know, of course it, it, it's like what am i irrelevant is what uh, 53 years on this planet done an awful lot of research especially after what i call the events in uh, uh new york and washington 20 years ago really oh, yeah really opened my mind up to the fact that there's narratives going on in the world that that I was oblivious to. You know, I was just, I I thought politicians were good and doctors and they knew their stuff and and the, you know, the media was there because they love us and, gosh, what a silly boy I was. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, and that's the hardest thing, isn't it? It's when you realise you can't, you know, unsee or unknow 
what you learn and and I think that's the hardest thing and that's the most stressful thing and you know a friend of mine who's very passionate about everything all of this um had a heart attack a while ago um well not that long ago a couple of weeks ago and he said it's not his job that's stressful he's a news he's um I guess he's a broadcaster it's not his job that's put him under the stress it's knowing what he knows but not being able to unknow it and that's kind of what he said and that is that's what probably for yourself but definitely for me I feel like that's what gives me a lot of stress and I feel like if you have to be a psychopath or a or a sociopath, not to feel some kind of anxiety or sadness about when you wake up and you see what is, you know, what they're trying to do to us, basically. To not feel anything, you have to be, you know, one of the loons yourself. So, um, you know, I'm just, I'm sure there's a lot of people going through a lot of emotions, especially, you know, over Christmas or, you know, the last couple of Christmases where they ban people from seeing each other and, um you know, all of that emotion to not feel, I think, is it, it kind of would make you one of them. So it's to be expected that people are very, you know, emotional and have a lot of feelings around it all. Mm. Lilani, listen, um, we've obviously got a lot of stuff to talk about yeah. in that in that kind of a, arena, but it is your podcast. I'm utterly honoured that you've come on my show. Um want to give a, a big special shout out to Matt Hoy right from the off because Matt put us in touch absolutely wonderful wonderful gentleman he's been on the show a couple of times now um and then again another uh another fighter a guy that could have just ducked his head because it would have made his life easier yeah. but but no he stood up for the kids and uh so much 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 love to you um Matt and a and a big Merry Christmas um can we go back to the beginning? Because was it a Roman Catholic school or upbringing? Yes, yeah. To, to page three model. <laughs> that's that's quite a leap. Yeah, it was. Um, I went to a Catholic school. Um, I don't really know how it happens. I just um, I was spotted for Miss Great Britain that when I was uh, eighteen years old, and I took part in that, and I ended up winning. Um, I had to take a year off uni to go and do the finals of Miss Universe in Hawaii. Um, so I, I thought I was going to go back. I, I never ended up doing that. But when I was um, while I was Miss Great Britain, I joined a model agency. Um, and then afterwards, I ended up doing page three. I'd met all these girls that were doing like ad commercials and um, advertise advertisements and doing panto. And I'm like, God, you know, it's such fun. But they were all... They were all page three girls. And um, I was like, oh, God, I've never even been topless on a beach. I was like, should I do it? Should I do it? And, and I did. And I actually didn't tell my parents. Um, my dad called me up and asked, told me that somebody at the bowling green <laughs> told him I was on in the sun. And uh, so he kind of went, are you in the sun today on page three? <laughs> um, yes. He goes, "Ah." Uh, Okay, let me call you back. <laughs> the phone <laughs> must have gone to get in. So, and and I think at first they were disappointed, but when they knew I wasn't going to go, you know, I was very sensible and I wasn't going to kind of lose my mind. Um, I think they were right. They were they were okay with it, and they could see that you know it was just a means to building up some money and and you know being able to you know, put a deposit on a flat and, and stuff like that at a young age. So, um, yeah, they, they they ended up being okay with it, but they weren't really happy. You know, my mum's from the Philippines, so she would have loved me to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. So I think it was a bit of a disappointment to her, but no, she's, uh, she's happy now. Hey, life's all about experiences, isn't it? You know? Yeah. And and um, it brings us to where we are today. And if it brings you to the point where you can stand up and fight for the kit, then you've led a bloody good life. And I think you know? that's what it is as well. Like, I learned to be very, um, I suppose, stubborn and not to care what people thought of me too much. So I guess it, it gave me character. You know, I, I wasn't able to be a snowflake and take everything to heart and... 
Um, you know, I got called names um, on all sorts from doing it, but it, it toughened me up to the point where I could stand up and, and stand up for myself and whoever else I wanted to stand up for and, you know, say, no, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And so I do think it gave me that backbone um, um, to be able to be able to do that for sure. I got one up on you, though, Lilani. Go on. I was in Playboy. <laughs> See, there you go. You beat me up. I did actually want to do that. <laughs> yes, no. I have to say, I kept my clothes on because uh, they didn't ask me to take them off. But <laughs> they, uh, when my, um, when I wrote my first memoir, it's a book called Eating Smoke. Yeah. It's about about my struggles with uh, drug addiction in Hong Kong. Um. I think it was Playboy South Africa very kindly did like a double a double page spread on my story. <laughs> and, uh, Amazing. And my claim to fame is I've been in Playboy. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> well, the whole page three thing, I mean, I remember it growing up. I remember my friend when we were about, gosh, this is probably going to upset people now, but I, I, I'm sure we was only about 14. And... and You'd go in my mate's house. I won't say his name. We'll get embarrassed. <laughs> but uh, he, and he used to go, come. And he used to take you to his bedroom. And in the back of his cupboard, he'd lift up the carpet. And under, <laughs> under there, he, he had all the page free cutouts. <laughs> and he came, he came from a very sort of strict, strict family. That's um, funny. But I think it was probably a lot of people's first insight into all things like sexuality um did did it it stopped now hasn't it yeah no yeah it stopped and you know i think a lot of people said that it was exploiting women which i don't believe it did for me it definitely didn't it it actually really helped because i was like i you know i was able to put a deposit on a flat when i would think i was 20 or 21 um and I was able to invest the money that I made modeling and, and doing page three. Um, well, rather than, you know, kind of spending it because I, I knew it wouldn't last, you know, it wouldn't last forever. Um, so to me, it wasn't. And and I had I can honestly say hand on heart, I had the best time in my life of my life. We we actually went out. We visited the troops a couple of times in um, Iraq, I think, Cyprus. And I think we went to... Czech Republic or, or Slovak or some, somewhere that had been split up. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Um, or maybe we'd gone to Bosnia. Anyway, whatever. We visited. The, there were so many things that were all part of it. You know, I did pantomime at Christmas and um, and all of that. But no, they've stopped it. And to me, you know, all these mothers or whatever were worried about kids seeing page three. But now... What kids can access on their phones is absolutely, you know, her just horrific at the touch of a button, you know, with all these, um, you know, porn channels out there that just like accessible, then the kids can just go on. And, 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 you know, what baffles me is no one's talking about that, you know, and there wasn't this big, you know, all these massive protests against page three that we had. There's nothing for that about what the kids are seeing now. You know, they're taking them to bloody drag queen story time and watching these drag queens with like, you know, their boobs out, jumping around in thongs and stuff. So no, it, it's like, yeah, it's mad. It's all mad to me. It's all mad how the world's changed. I mean, obviously I'm not the sort of person that reads the sun. Sorry, that sounded really Rude. I think, <laughs> what, okay. what, I'm, what I mean is I don't read any mainstream stuff. I don't even read The Guardian. I've, I've got a Telegraph membership online because the issues they cover come up so much, like in the yeah. podcast, if you know what I mean. You, yeah, you've, yeah. Got to, you've got to know like what people are talking about. But other yeah. than that, um, really don't, don't do the mainstream news thing at all. But did I remember, did it, like they had to tame it down towards the end of the page three years is uh, um, because I, don't know. I lived in america at the time uh, when it all the arguments for and against were happening when they and then finally when they stopped it i was already i'd already moved to america um 
But I know there was a point where I think after Jordan, they were like, right, we're not going to let anyone have any boob jobs because we don't want to influence girls to go out and get boob jobs. Um, and I think as far as the sun was, it was always quite tame, you know, um, it was just, you know, they didn't never had heavy makeup. It wasn't, oh, you know, too over. It was just kind of silly smile and a little pose, and <laughs> that was about, um, that was about it. So I think, but I just think they just after a while it just stopped because, well, the same reason as grid girls, you know, the grid girls at the car shows and the car races had to stop. They all decided it was um, exploitative, and now you know, 15 year olds can go change their gender and that's not. So this is the thing. It's like, I don't know. I just, I just think the world's gone a little bit mad and where people were trying to do the right, you know, was, was it, were they trying to do the right thing by banning page three? But now, you know, it's almost like, oh gosh, little girls, be afraid of your boobs and, and go and chest bind and change your gender and all the rest of it. So yeah, it's, it's a weird, it, the whole thing's just, a bit weird what people get mad at and what people try to change and what they actually allow now, which is far worse in, in terms of what kids can access mm. um, on their phones and see, you know, those drag queen acts and all the rest of it. Yeah, it was a funny thing. I'm pretty sure, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure back in the day, like, the minimum age for a priest, uh, page free girl, sorry, was it was like 16. Um, it, oh, going back, we're talking like I'm old enough to remember Sam Fox and the the wonderful Linda Lusardi. <laughs> um, the only reason I mention it is how many people have like thrown their toys out the pram at this Prince Andrew thing because you know he had a Yes, allegedly, yeah. allegedly a relationship with a set. Well, not allegedly. I think he paid her off, didn't he? But yeah. I wonder how many people are like hating on that. And it's like, hang See, on, she she was seventeen. They used to put sixteen year olds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got. I mean, I've definitely got my whole other theory on like the whole that Prince Andrew thing, and I think it's a little bit different to you know a lot of the people that are attacking because I do think by focusing on such a high profile celebrity and somebody who's just over the age of consent, right? Bear with me on this one because people <laughs> people might go back. I think it it's taken away from the fact that real pedophiles out there and on Epstein's list who the public's curios curiosity was satisfied enough by Prince Andrew and all of that that they haven't gone deeper and found out, you know, the real horrors of what's been going on. I mean, someone attacked me the other day on Twitter for saying, look, you really haven't gone into the whole Prince Andrew thing enough. I said, but you know what I have gone into? I've gone onto the heir of DuPont or DuPont, who no one really knows about, who raped his three-year-old daughter and was spared jail by the judge, was found guilty, but he was spared jail. And I talked about that and talked about that. And no one seems to care because it's not a big celebrity. He's not Prince Andrew. He's, you know, it's so heinous and vile that people would rather think, I don't want to think about that. Whereas they can keep talking and talking, and talking about Prince Andrew and this 17 year old um, because it's almost bearable, but far, you know, it's, 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 far, it's, Keep, keeping eyes off the most mm. vile and disgusting crimes out there. Yes, exactly. Um, people use that word paedophile. They don't know what it means. That right. that's that's like toddlers and babies and stuff. Yes. The actual word um, uh, for the old uh, older word uh, teenager is is actually hebophile, <laughs> right? But right. like you say, this this muddy in the water. Um, well, exactly what you say, Lilani. It takes the focus off the real bloody evil crimes that are going on out there. And um yes, that's another story. Can can I be really rude and tell me to cough if you want? <laughs> but ha have you had surgery? Is that 
No, I did fix. Well, I fixed my broken nose. I had my nose was um when I was ten, I had an accident, and my nose was smashed across my face, and I still have. Well, it was kind of had a big bump on it, and it bent. It bent around, so I had to. I had it straightened, but I still have really breathing difficulties out of my left side, my left nostril. Mm. Um, but I don't want to do anything again. But no, I didn't. I've not had um any kind of like plastic surgery or anything like that. No, no Botox. I don't know if uh. Okay, frowning my forehead. Yeah, but that, yeah, that, you know. that, that, that's my, the whole point of what I'm getting to is I wish we lived in, well, well, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we lived in a society where we where we just appreciate people for who they are and that young, all, all young women are beautiful, you know? Well, that's what I think. So when, when I lived in LA and you start, start to see people's, faces morph into each other um i kind of liked it when i saw game of thrones and how all the women the leading women were all very different and not necessarily not necessarily what this new age beauty is right you know some had thin lips some had a bump in the nose and i actually kind of appreciated that like you know these the the main girls in it were not your classic um well, actually, they were probably like more classic. They weren't like your plasticky, pretty kind of. Um, they weren't your plasticky. Um, what's that show? Towy kind of. Mm, yeah. Looking things with the lips and the cheek fillers and the contouring and all of that. They're just like, you know, just kind of. Um, I just think natural, Lilla, natural Lilla. when they got character. Yes. It's it's just, you know, one of my friends said to me, oh, Chris, I'm thinking of having a boo job. And I'm like, oh, no, please. No. Right? There's a few things going on here. First off, you're bloody lovely. You're just so, like, why are you doing it? Is it like to attract a mate? Because if that's the case, I can tell you now, there's an endless supply of nice men out there that will yeah. love you for what you are and and – you know, but the the other thing is, what kind of bloke wants his partner to 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 do that shit? You know, that's see, that's what I always think. That's what I always think as well. Is who are the guys that into the, into that? When you see like these cartoon doll looking women, like I wouldn't want a guy. Yeah, it's kind of it, into that because it's 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 odd. But also, there's you know. She definitely shouldn't because so many women I know, because, you know, obviously implants have been around for like a while now, are having such health problems. There's such um, a movement towards having them removed. I know so many women at the moment getting theirs removed. There's, it's called explanting. Um, and, and, and one of my friends actually is getting hers removed. And she said that the surgeon that she went to see to do, won't even do boot, won't do even do implants anymore mm. because she says there's just so many problems with them, and there's so many women want them removed now that he's he's his whole business is now is just removing them. Mm. So it's you know it's another one of those things that wasn't really looked at at the start. Everyone kind of rushed into it. Not that many long term studies. And then you see all these health problems and breast implant illness or silicon um, leaching out into the body because the boot, the you know, the implants are ruptured. Do you think, Lilani, um, did you realise you were, let's be honest, you're, you're a very beautiful woman. How, did people tell you that when you were young? Were, were you aware of that or did you, were you in, because I'll tell you my little story for what it's worth right i went through the old steroids thing i was <laughs> bloody huge at one point i I'd, I'd, I'd like 17 and a half inch biceps <laughs> <laughs> my mates in the marines used to just laugh their asses off because it was it was just so ex extreme you know yeah. and i went through the you know can't pass a mirror i got a brush Make sure my hair, yeah, okay, right. Hang on, no, let's have a double check. Yep, yep. And and I did all of that. And it wasn't until, gosh, that I was in my 20s 
and I'd been through the drug thing, you know, which again is uh, obviously lots of interacting reasons behind addiction. But, you know, one of them is uh, possibly insecurity about your yourself, how you were. But it wasn't until like I was like 24 or something and that one of my girlfriends just turned around to me one day and said, Chris, when you walk down the street, heads turn, right? <laughs> we are talking like this is 25 <laughs> years ago now, folks. All right. All right. But, but, and I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> and she's like, Chris, you're like a really nice looking. My point is, Lelani, no one had ever said that to me in my life. Right. 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 Even though all all my young life, and I'm just saying this, folks, but girls always used to take a shine to me. You know, they they <laughs> when I was at primary school, the girls used to queue up when our bus pulled in in the morning, and as I got off the bus, they used to present me with items from their pat lunch box. Oh, <laughs> look at that! How cute! It's like cheesy what's it? Um, one time they was going to give one. One of our friends at school, her dad worked for Wrigley's, you know, the big chewing gum yeah, factory. Yeah. And and if I was going to kiss Caroline on the lips, I was going to get a pack of 200 <laughs> Wrigley. <laughs> but anyway, the point isn't to big myself up because I love everybody. I think everyone's beautiful. And I think we need to say that a lot, lot more. No one needs to be doing stuff to their body to no. com conform to other people's like twisted view of life um but my point is like no one it took to like 23 years old or something for any girl to s actually say that to me and I, I i wonder if you know is is this an issue in our insecurities that people are shy about just saying things as they are well, i think people are because i think people don't often compliment um well especially well I, I think it's like so much bigger people don't often compliment because they're scared that that's going to mean they're hitting on somebody like is it, you know you know if i had got a boyfriend and i say oh you know you, you look great to some guy he might think i was going to be hitting on him mm -hmm. and so i think it hold that holds people back from doing it um also, this day of offence where everybody's offended by men giving compliments for some reason. You know, I'm so against all of that nonsense and wokery. But we're living in this weird time where, like, you know, it seems like if a guy's really pleasant to a woman, like, holds the door open or does something that they would do for their mother even, you know, that gets all offended. So uh, there, men are afraid to give compliments. But... um. <laughs> I think for me, when I was growing up, I was really awkward. I went through that really like awkward looking teen stage and had really goofy teeth. I did have braces. Um, and so I didn't think, oh gosh, you know, I, di I didn't realize, I don't think, if, if heads ever turned, I wouldn't have ever noticed because no, I'm always alone no. in the world anyway, daydreaming about something or another. I'm usually daydreaming about something. Um, so yeah i i didn't know and it was only because i was spotted that i ever decided to enter miss great britain i would never have thought oh i'm going to go and enter myself into it it wouldn't have even have you know crossed my mind and then obviously when you're modeling there's so much rejection because you go to castings right so there'd be like a couple of castings a day and for the most part you know, you don't get them. You just get lucky. You might get the odd one here and there, but there's so much rejection involved as well. Um, and, uh, but one, you know, one thing you mentioned, like with addiction, a lot of people, um, I've known people with addiction. Um, my fiance has been sober for coming up to his 30th year now. I think it's a lot of very, very sensitive people as well. I, I found that a lot of people that have, got addiction problems very very um sensitive people or you know they can see what's a lot of people can see what's going on around them and don't necessarily know how to deal with those things and, and stuff so 
Yeah. Yeah, so addiction's always caught, cast in a bad light. And for the mainstream out there, they love confusing addiction with substance use, which are just two. Yes. You know, addiction is a mental health condition. Usually, usually not always, but often born out of childhood trauma. Yeah. Whereas substance use is, that's just partying or, or, yeah. or whatever, yeah. you yeah. know. Um that's another thing again is 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 billy your partner yes yeah yeah billy and i did my research he's the lead guitarist in the cult with yeah that's right <laughs> that's my... right yeah he wrote the songs and and stuff so yeah that's that's him god i bet he's seen a bit of the wild side Yes, he has. And he sometimes he tries to go there and mention a couple of things. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to know. Yeah. You, uh... <laughs> Unless it's funny. Anything to do with women, do not tell me. Mm. So, yeah, 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 I'm sure he's definitely seen a lot. And it's funny because we live in a little village now, very, very, very quiet village. And um, especially over Christmas, people say, oh, come on, have a drink. And he's like, no, no, I don't drink. Oh, go on, just one. Because they don't. I guess they don't realise that he doesn't drink because he used to overly, overly drink and all sorts, you know, when he did. So um, he's like, no, no, I actually don't drink. I haven't drank for 30 years. And then they're like, oh, OK, OK. But I guess, you know, they would, they just don't, wouldn't expect it from him being, you know, a rock star from the 80s. Oh, doesn't doesn't touch um, alcohol. But so, yeah, it's quite it's quite funny over Christmas and and yes yeah yes i try not to drink for the most part I, I, as i'm i'm always honest with my friends out there i don't always succeed um but what i can tell you is there is this misnomer or a myth that like if you give up alcohol you get like black sheep from all your and and i found the complete opposite yeah i found people were like what really yeah yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't drunk for two years. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you won't be wanting it. You, you know, yeah. occasionally someone would do the old, oh, go on it. And and I, I'd say, all right, look, there's my phone. If you want to ring my, go my girlfriend <laughs> yeah. and, and tell her that her son's dad, you know, he's been really trying hard to stay off the booze, you you, you want him to have a and, – and if she says yes – she probably would anyway. <laughs> that, 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 then, then, and and then they're like, "Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm being a dick, aren't I? Yes, you are. You know, let let people. But yes, um, how? I think some people don't realize. I don't think they realize. You know, kind of the reason why people are, and I don't, I don't think they're doing it in a way like to ruin anything that anyone's done. They just don't. You know, it's not in. It's not in their own personal experience as, as you know, for not drinking. So um, it, it, I don't think it kind of just even occurs, it even occurs to them. And then I think they do feel a bit bad after. Yeah. Yes. I think a few people will relate to this. It, 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 you know, when I go in a, a restaurant or a bar or whatever, and people that just take a sip of the drink and then they leave it and they go. People like me are like, <laughs> not allowed to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've got to neck it then you've got to get another one, another one. right and then you got to get one for the road yeah just you can't just have one sip and and and, yeah. and and then um then i'd be like right okay right that's for me then thank you <laughs> yes um leilani tell us i mean uh, uh, miss great britain um uh, uh, all the television you've done, how how does all that sit with you? Because you're a, you're very grounded, aren't you? You know. Um, I don't know. I think <laughs> you. That's a compliment. So thank you. Um, I always find it hard. I still find it hard to take compliments, but um, I I don't know. I think I don't know what it is that's made me like this. I think it's because I've got I've kept my friends who always kind of been my friends from when I was younger and my family, and they'll always tell me when I'm being a dick. So I've got no chance to 
be anything but grounded, I think, uh, and, you know, keep my feet on the ground. So, um, and also, I think I've never really got into that, like, party scene or, or like a real superficial kind of scene. I've always, I've always kept like, you know, solid friends around me and I love my animals and nature and stuff mm. like that. And that's, you know, kind of what I enjoy. And I think all of that kind of keeps you, keeps you at a level as well. I um, want to come on and talk about your animals. Um, you're, you've got a beautiful white, is it, is it that a horse or a pony? A yeah, yeah, she's a big old horse. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Thank you. And you ride. I don't know. Can we say bareback these days? Is that yeah. is that politically <laughs> yeah. correct? <laughs> so she's um she's an amazing horse actually. I um I've had her for about five years now, and I'll keep I'll keep her forever. They live till about thirty years, which a lot of people don't realize. But um she's, I you know I jump her and stuff. But I can also ride her without a saddle. Or, or a bridle, I trained her myself, and she'll just listen to like my voice, and I'll have a, like a a little neck strap on her, and she'll listen to my voice. Or it's called your seat. It's what your your bottom does, I suppose, when you sat on the saddle. You know, whatever parts in contact with them, they're listening to what you're saying and, and your balance and all of that. So um, yeah, I can I can ride her without a saddle and a bridle in a place that she's familiar with. Mm. Um, and do that yeah she's a she's a lovely horse and when you see the show jumping on telly it 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 looks so effortless and it so yeah. seamless and did i know from having ridden i can't think of anything that would terrify me more <laughs> i have to say it's scary now that when i see how hot when they jump on tv it is quite it is incredible. I don't jump anywhere near as high as those those people. So what's actually funny is if you go to like a little local show and you look at some of the small classes, like, you know, one tenth of that height, because it's such amateurs doing it, it's like a demolition derby. You know, obviously, luckily, the poles fall down. It doesn't hurt the horses. But it's like a demolition derby. There's horses stopping. There's riders falling off. There's horses knocking the poles down. It's a mess. As you go up the bigger and bigger classes where the better and better riders are, they get to a level and you're just like, my God, they make it look so easy because they're just so in tune with their horses. It looks so simple. And and then, yeah, they, you've got to go to the local just shows and just see the absolute carnage of the riders falling, horses stopping, see how difficult it really is. But yeah, it's it. That's always what amazes me is like at the, the bigger jumps always look easier because it's far far superior riders um, riding. Yeah, you're so brave. We, we get <laughs> we get a lot of people on this. We have a lot of military guests on this channel, and the the response is always uh, like it, people just think the military is such like heroes whereas i am always saying no they're just like normal human beings right they really are and we've got to stop bigging up war you know that's just a nonsense yeah, you yeah. know that's a nonsense that suits a certain uh big club is what i've been referring to it as lately but um well you see it now don't you with this there's no de-escalation i mean i called that from february i'm like shouldn't we be de-escalating situations yes of course we should you know i point this out a lot lilani uh, i've i've lived worked and traveled in a, over 85 countries now right i've been i've met a few dicks been robbed a few times but that's to be expected if you like on the backpacker route or whatever mm -hmm. but for the vast majority of that i've just met lovely wonderful people people that gave me gave up so many times i've stayed with a family that i've just met on the side of the road and they've gone oh you're you're english you're traveling oh just come come back come and stay with us and amazing and, and even though they've lived in in utter poverty they still give you their bed you know they yeah. will still sacrifice. Oh, I shouldn't say sacrifice. They will still um, butcher their their biggest chicken 
right? And they've only got like three of them. And these things are, are like gold dust, say, in, in uh, I taught kids in Mozambique. Um, and I just say that, you know, I've met Russian people, I've met Ukrainian people, I've obviously met English people. Um, you meet them in a bar, you're just going to crack on, share a beer. Yeah. But within 10 minutes, you've swapped email addresses because it's people just love people. Yeah. And yet we're in this perverse, twisted situation where if the media put out that these people are bad, oh, well, then we just be we just believe it. Let's go, let's go and bomb them to death. Bomb them yeah. and their kids to yeah. It, it it's. I hope. Do you, are people going to wake up to this? Do you think? I think because of people. Because you used to see it. You used to see a lot more of. Um, you just used to see a lot more people wanting and asking for peace, but it's just weird for me. It's like the media have got behind this thing this year and, and you don't you don't see it as much and I always say it's never going to be the wealthy or the ones that are at the top or the ones that are making the decisions that are going to be su the ones that suffer it's the ones that suffer are always going to be just the normal everyday innocent people yes of course and it's normal innocent everyday people that get fooled into backing this stuff isn't it yeah yeah. I think we're very detached, aren't we, from the carnage that's created and how, I mean, you know, imagine your house gets hit by an airstrike. It's, it, I think it's just beyond, it's, 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 it's so far beyond what people can even imagine. Ref reflect on. Imagine, I, I don't even want to say it because it, 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 but, but, you know, you've got to then go through the rubble and find like bits and pieces. I think people know, yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying. Like who, who would wish that like on anyone? And when you, when you, when you get to the bottom of all these conflicts, I don't, it doesn't matter which one you find they're all controlled by the same people. They're all instigated under like, you know, dubious, circumstances yeah. and and i just uh, is, i lilani forgive me but i think it's great on a podcast like this that we hopefully someone will out there listening will go do you know what i've been thinking that myself yeah. and maybe maybe they'll come on the journey that we've been on you know that of freedom and love and peace and kindness and empathy and and not being afraid so afraid of our lives that we go to trillion dollar you know corporations that can uh that can fix us you know yes yeah no no exactly i think uh i think that's the thing as well they're, they're purposely messing with us so they can then say here you go we've got the solution to mm. fix you and your mental health problems that we've created by putting you so far out of balance of you know where you belong and where you should be um, I am conscious of your time. You're so. Oh kind. no! Don't worry about me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Good. Lilani, um, what I try to do on this show, and I think it's why we're one of the lasting truth shows <laughs> that have not been kicked off YouTube, is um, I refer to the last. Uh, I refer to the last couple of years as the uh, anything like the Scovy Doby, <laughs> 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 and I refer to the the thing yeah. as the procedure so if we can try and yes yeah with your media savviness i think you you know what i'm getting on about you know it just helps smooth the uh the the, the youtube ride a bit but how did you get involved in this when did it when when did it start to affect you when did you think oh gosh i've got to speak out about this Right. It was funny enough. It was very early on. So I had, um, I think when the, when when it was all kicking off in China, I think I was still in America. I'd come back, um, and when when was it the first? And I hadn't really paid that much attention to it. Then I think um, I remember 
America was shutting the airports and I had my first panic. This was before any lockdown. Um, America was shutting the airports. And my fiance was supposed to come back to the UK. I had a feeling he was going to propose to me. And I was very, very, very anxious about him going to get back. And he actually managed to. He'd, he'd had a tip off that they were going to shut the airports in L.A., um, and I was like, this was like on a Thursday or, or this was on like early in the week. Um, he was supposed to travel on the Friday, arrive on the Saturday. Anyway, I was like, I don't think they would do it before the weekend. So I was like, don't come back. Well, come back. But, you know, I don't think you need to change your flight. Anyway, consequently, he came back on the Saturday airport. Uh, uh, all flights were stopped on the Sunday. He, he arrived back on the Saturday. And I started getting this anxious feeling. So I was like, they're just going to shut things down. Like, how how can they do this? Where is this going? Then we had lockdowns. And I think I think that started making me panic because I didn't think they were a good idea. But I thought, if it's just two weeks, how are we going to, you know, how are businesses going to get through these two weeks? It's going to be massive. And then I thought to myself, well, I guess if it's just two weeks – They'll find a way. Anyway, first time they moved the goalposts, I literally, it was my gut. It was everything. It was a physical feeling of, like, sickness that it was wrong, that it was anxiety. And I'd never had an anxiety attack before or a panic attack. Mm. And I started getting more and more panicky, more and more anxious. And I've always said, if you feel anxious, you've got to listen to your body. There's some Your body's telling you something. There's a reason you feel that way. You have to find out whether it's work-related, friendship-related, relationship-related. There's something that makes you feel that way. And I knew that this was all being brought on by what the government was saying. And I'm like, if they're going to change the goalpost once, they could change it a million times. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm not. St- I cannot stay in my house for an hour a day. Plus... I kind of was allowed to go and see my horses because um, I can't remember what it came up to, but because I cared for animals, I was able to see my horses. And then as I saw my horses, um, I'd see all the little girls. This is before I kept them at home. I now keep my horses at home. Um, and we moved to a farm because of all of this. It was all like a process. Um, and... I'd see all the little little kids. There were a couple of little kids that kept their horses at the stables. I thought, they're lucky. It's like pony club to them. You know, they're able to come here and they're going to see their horses. What about the kids that aren't? What about the kids that are in a flat, that share bedrooms, that they're lucky if they even have a TV for everyone? What about those kids? Mm. And it made me feel like really sick again. And then I started hearing... My, you know, friends telling me about their panic about shutting their businesses down. And again, you know, nothing was particularly bad as far as my life was. But knowing what was going on with all my friends around me, um, you know, pe- then, you know, musicians cancelling tours or, and it's not just, you know, the budget and people go, oh, like a new musician cancelling his tour. Well, so and so. Elton John say he earns a lot of money well no one's what about his roadies what about his guitar tech the lighting people it's more than just a musician it's a whole group of people and I say musician because obviously my fiance is one so I was and Matt Hoy as well so I was um it was everyone else's stories that really start affecting me I just I can't not speak out I'm in a position where you know um I'm not really employed by anybody so I can't someone can't just you know fire me Mm. so if I don't speak out then it's completely wrong and immoral and I'm doing everyone I know a disservice by not saying something so that's when I just said like this is insane the first thing I said was that I thought lockdowns were insane but I knew that lockdowns were more for control in order for them to say, right, we're going to start giving you your freedoms back if you do this, if you do that. And I knew way before the procedures um, came out that they would try and mandate them. I just knew, my gut was telling me, 
you know, luckily, I think because of the amount of protesting that went on, that didn't happen here, but it happened elsewhere. You know, we saw Canada, mm. Australia, New Zealand, America. Well, they had it bad, didn't they? They had it. Um, well, we had it bad. I think it was it Austria. They were going to make it law. <laughs> Like, literally, yeah. if you didn't go along with it, your front door would be smashed in. And um, I think and they they use what they use so well. And I knew it. I could see it. They used it so that people literally thought the, the only way to get our freedom back was to have the procedure. Mm. But that is literally thought that that. And I'm like, that isn't. That isn't freedom then, is it? That's not freedom. If you've got to do something... You know, and I've never trusted pharmaceutical companies for 20 years. I've never trusted pharmaceutical companies. You know, I don't know. Dope, there's a show called Dope Sick about the Oxycontin family. Yes. Um, and addiction as well. And how they got these people addicted on the painkillers. And then they, when the painkillers didn't work and didn't do their job, they called it breakthrough pain, like we had breakthrough you know, disease that got through the procedure. And it's just, you know, it's all related. I've never trusted Big Pharma. I've always been against Big Pharma. Um, and so I just, I was just like, this isn't, this isn't freedom. This isn't, this is, this isn't freedom. And I kind of showed me that I would be right. And I will never, ever stop now. Now I'll never stop. So I spoke out, got, Deplatformed off Instagram, which then just told me that I was onto something because they don't just deplatform you, you know. Yeah, yeah. For, for something like that. So then I'm just. So then it just made me even more angry, and I won't. And 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 I'm thinking, right? No, mm. no one's going to shut me up. And <laughs> that's that kind of that's kind of how it happened. And I will, you know, I will fight for our freedom, for our kids' freedom, for my friend's kids freedom for, you know, it's my battle now. Mm. And I mean this with the greatest of respect. Fellas, you veterans out there, is it, this is a former page free model that is fighting for the children's future. And where the fuck were you? Come on, let's be honest. All that freedom our forebears fought for and they sacrificed. Like, everyone is just... You know, it's funny. I was sat with Chico. I ran into Chico at a restaurant one day. Chico was, you know, the, the singer at Chico at the time. And he was one of the first people. He goes, Lilani, isn't it funny to think that, you know, was just so, I was such a joke of an entertainer. You know, you're a page girl. You've got right, said Fred. You know, this... Mm -hmm funny bang all like you know really out there trying to fight for just futures really yes it's not rocket science is it when when people have the ability to lock the whole planet in their homes like you got people on like desert island or, or you know these remote islands that have never you know, seen Westerners or whatever, and and they're all wearing the, I'll call it the underpants on the face, and they're they're diving into bushes when their next door neighbour of like yeah. fif fifty years walks by. But whoa, and, and, and it, it's not hard to see; it's a massive control mechanism. <laughs> um, really, it's, and it's and and also I used to say to people like. What is your experience? Like, what can you see around you? Do you see people dying in the street, like in China? Like, because we're being programmed to listen to this and we're being told not to listen to what our eyes are showing us. And, you know, you know what we're, what we're hearing. I had, had a friend message me at the start and she's like, for, no, who was who, speaking to at the start about two of her friends that supposedly died from this thing and she messaged me maybe a month ago and she's like god you know i've realized now they were both put on ventilators way too early and that's you know mm. what caused that's what caused their deaths you know it wasn't ah uh, yeah know. no no <laughs> it's fine it's fine up yeah, i they can got put ventilators yeah i i show up this web page quite a lot on the show um uh, 
It's from the Office of National Statistics. Okay, this is the UK's governing body on statistics. It's a government um, platform, right? Is no, is no, you know. I I hate using the word tinfoil hat and all that because I think we'll understand what that's used. <laughs> but it's not, you know, it's not some random website is what I'm trying to say. And somebody put in a freedom of information request and it was between the dates of like something 2020 and something uh, 2021. Basically about 19 months during the thick of what we went through, right? During the thick of it. And they they asked a simple question, how many people have died from this thing, right? And if you ask any English person, British person, how many people do you think died, you know, of like all that scaremongering and locking yeah. down, the kids out of school, businesses crashing, da da da, da. Most people go, oh, oh, deaths, oh, but... Uh, 200,000, Chris? No, no, make that, make that about 300,000 people. Yeah. No, you're all wrong. Under the age of 35, 50. 50. That is a fact that if if you care to, and let's be honest, most people are too, too busy watching their celebrity toilet swap to, <laughs> to, 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 to bother to find out the truth, but... If you go on the Office of National City, that is what you're going to find, okay? Yeah. That is what you're going to find. And so what's the rest of it? Well, the rest of it's fear-based, isn't it? It's just fe yeah. it's fear, false science, you know? People I mean, can you imagine if they had a ticker, like they had the, at the time of all the um, sudden unexpected deaths going mm. on right now, if they had that little ticker going? Oh. I mean, the fact that they had those on – Every news channel is like just counting up death. It's like beyond me. Mm -hmm. They've done that for cancer. And you know what else that I found really weird is like, so my my friend told me that her grandma had caught it. Who was 90 years old, had dementia and cancer. And you know what? She got better. And she got better because she was in her own home and she had nurses come and she got better. So that was one thing. Mm -hmm. And also... um. You know, my fiance's had cancer before. And so when he had cancer, people came and they called up and they wished him the best. And they told him stories of positivity and hope and people that had got through it. Here we're seeing, all we're seeing and being bombarded with is, oh, if you catch it, you're going to die. If you catch it, you're going to get put on a ventilator. Then you've got no chance. And, you know, if you catch it, da, 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 da. there was never any hope for anyone and and there was also never any you know it was all isolation so it's the worst you know you don't take somebody die and then just isolate them and this is you know this is what happened this is why my mind and how I felt was not and what I was seeing didn't it didn't mesh together with what was coming through the tv that I was being told that I should believe because you know, um, I don't know what it is about me, but I just think, you know, when you when when you have somebody that's ill, you give them positivity. You don't give them all the negativity because I truly believe that has an effect on health as well. Um, and and the fear and the mental state and the positive wishes and ne or negativity and what have you. Yes, Leilani, I I, I call it the agenda, right? Yes. Yeah the agenda that we're all fight we're all facing um but another one is this just mass division that they're trying to create in society it's it's not it's not rocket science to see they're trying to flood this country with uh, illegal immigration they're yeah. trying to destroy all like bastions of community and all church if that's your you know if that's people's thing whatever you yeah. You know, your church ceases to become like the community hub when there's like 30 mosques <laughs> yeah. wrapped around it, right? Um yeah. The other thing is, of course, this the, the whole 
gender issue and and confusing young people about who they yeah. are and the fact that we are all born different you know yeah and but i think um, i think it is an agenda and i think it's all very very linked and everything you know you it, you're made to think that these are all separate issues going on but they're all you know kind of they are linked when you look at big organizations big organizations like the wef and you see their plans you know, you kind of see how their plans fit in, like, you know, without borders and they want all this, like, this movement. And then you have Serco, who are being funneled our money through from the government through to Serco. Serco control the borders, but Serco also have the contracts to house the migrants in whatever buildings they see fit or can get their hands on. So now that, you know, they're asking landlords to to rent them their houses or flats, giving them like five year no break contracts, saying they'll fix and maintain any problems within the property. What's that going to do for our own British people if, you know, landlords decide they're going to rent them out to illegal immigrants instead of our own our own not just our citizens, but people who have come here legally through the correct channels who are contributing to society and have had all the paperwork. What's, you know, what's that going to do for them? And then, you know, putting them in stately homes and five-star and four-star hotels and, and, you know, because they can offer, Serco have been given our tax money by the government to go and offer like these, property owners these insane amounts of money so you know and it's all it's just all tied up together yes it is and i'm i'm so glad you recognize it um i'm pretty hot on this sort of thing because uh my thing is in this set of molly even though i believe you know we live forever because we are we are the universe okay that it's just that simple we're the universe experiencing itself and once you realize that it's such a beautiful thing because it means you've got no enemies because right. if everyone else is the universe experience, then we're all the universe that, that, that cuts out war that cuts out like, you know, anger, bitterness, keyboard worry. It's like, don't have a go at me. I'm you. <laughs> what, what's the yeah, point? Yeah. You know, was, and it's, it's great. It's great that you see the agenda. Cause like I say, in this set of molecules, I'm I'm very keen, Lelani, to understand it all. Right, I don't like being screwed over. I think it comes down to a damaged childhood that I was probably screwed over as a kid quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, at an age where I really shouldn't have. You know, I shouldn't have been by adults that that should have really been lo- lo- looking after me, and uh, it's made me a bit of a warrior, really. Um, and I think. I think that's the thing. You nailed it there. It's being able to put the jigsaw puzzle together rather than seeing it as separate yeah. issues. And going, uh, going. So on the transgender thing, yeah. it, 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 I tell you what upsets me is like, why don't we just love people for being born, whatever, you know, we are all different. I got bits about me that are quite feminine. I'm, I I wouldn't want some adult stepping in going, right, Chris, what you need to do, get down to surgery, yeah? Get some bits yeah. stuck on you or, or oh, chopped God. off. Yeah, it, because if I'm like 13 or something, Jesus Christ, I didn't know who I was till no. I, was about, I was about 48. It, 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 took, it took parenthood. It took finding a career that I love. It, it took finding out about my diet, my exercise, what works for me, da 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 and, and the spiritual spiritual thing has been massive, you know, realizing that we're all just perfect. We don't need we don't need nothing. We don't need to aspire to be nothing. We're born perfect. And yet they're telling like seven year olds that just because one day you have this thought or you maybe have strong feet it, 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 that you that you've either got this option yeah male or this fit it, it it's just incredible and it's insanity and again 
it's all this division, isn't it? You know, it, it getting people to go through life solely focused on their identity and their ego and da, 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 rather than realizing, no, we're all born perfect. You know, we're, we're, and we're the, yeah, you see, this is where you're so right about this because I, when I was a little girl, I was an absolute tomboy. I thought girly things were the worst thing on the planet. Like, Although I did have my little ponies, I thought, but I hate Barbie. I wanted Action Man. I thought Transformers were the best things ever because they changed into cars and they did <laughs> stuff. I thought boys' tours are the best. I played with the boys on the street. I climbed trees. I got muddy. And even then when I was 16, I got my school to start a rugby team because I hated netball. I thought it was rubbish. So I wanted to play rugby. I wanted to be like the boys. But I knew I was a little girl and no one, it was called being a tomboy, right? It was just being a tomboy. Maybe she'll grow out of it. Maybe she won't, as far as everyone else thought. And, and, and you know, obviously I did completely grow out of it. Now, the way I see it is now they don't say that to little girls. They'll, they'll, they'll suggest that maybe they were born in the wrong body. Should they then have home puberty blockers? And, you know, same with little boys. It's like, you know, there was that movie um, of the little boy, Billy Elliot. He wanted to become a ballet dancer, right? This little mm. boy. Now they'd say, Billy, stop. Maybe if you thought you should be a little girl, you know, that's what they would do instead of letting kids be kids and experience life as ever they want to do it, you know. And so to take a child and then put into their mind that they might be in the wrong body at a time that's already confusing and then have all these lunatic adults and and people that have done it that they're just to influence girls there's a, there's this one transgender former male who's all over tiktok who biden invited into the white house who puts his hair in ponytails and says I'm going to talk about my days of girlhood, not womanhood, because he's not trying to appeal to women. He's trying to appeal to little girls. Mm -hmm. And he's being given, instead of them giving the endorsements and the money to a little girl, they're giving, they're these huge companies giving money to this adult male dressed up as a little girl saying, I'm going to have a little sleepover tonight. This is what I have in my sleepover party pack. And, you know, you can buy this, this, and this. And they're purposely targeting children mm. and making them confused and not saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you want to do with your life or how you want to live. You were born as the right person. As, as you said, you were born perfect. This is your body and it's fine. Now, you know, hormone blockers, which are actually, you know, the, the hormone blockers that they give to kids, the puberty blockers, um, are actually chemical castration for sex offenders. It's the same pharmaceutical product. And then you have another person, another child, that's going to be dependent on a pharmaceutical company for the rest of their life. And they're, you know... And it's ir 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 irreversible, some of these changes as well. Yeah. And you, you hit on a good point there, Lalani, is... The people that get in this voice at the moment, they're really damaged people. Yeah. I mean that no disrespect to them. I've been a damaged person most of my life. Like I get, you know, the the difference is I speak from a place of peace, love, kindness, and empathy now. And and whereas they're catching these people like at their worst. Yes. When they're the most damaged. Yeah. And they're angry and they're upset and they're confused and they feel persecuted and d rather than going, listen, fella or fellas, <laughs> you, you need a bit of time to like find out who you are and calm down a bit and yeah. learn to love yourself. Da, da, da. Oh no. The thrust of them on the mainstream media as though that's that their word is the normal. Yeah. It's yeah. um, in, and, it's, and if people don't think that there is a social contagion for these things, or if people don't think that 
These people do have a lot of influence on the minds of our children. All you have to do is go back and look at the days of, like, say, Pamela Anderson and the amount of women, grown women, who went, I'm going to go and get a boob job or I'm going to dye my hair blonde and I'm going to get a tattoo of barbed wire because Pamela Arissa Anderson's done it and a, and, a, and a tattoo of a Playboy bunny. I know people that have done that. Mm. And then when Kim Kardashian came along, uh, the, the bum implants and all of this. So we People don't think that these nutcases that they're parading around on TV, these really, really insane people aren't affecting the minds of our kids. They're absolutely wrong. Because if they can, if, if, if something like, you know, someone like Pamela Anson can affect the minds of grown women, then the same is going to happen with our kids, with these, these people being paraded around for sure. What's the answer to people in 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 a in a in a bit of a soundbite? Um, I mean, my journey. I didn't really have a chance to go. I, I was in university one day, and my lecturer went, "Have you seen these videos about the um, the Pentagon?" Right. This no. was back. This was back twenty years ago. After yeah, the, yeah. the the thing, the big thing. Right. He's gone. There's people suggesting that that might not have been like what they said for someone with an inquiring mind like mine that just triggered me i mean it's, it's and it's been 20 years of beautiful research you know it's yeah. brought me the the biggest part of it was getting into the spiritual stuff and realizing you know get rid of your ego it ain't about you sunshine you know and if you think it is you're just gonna your life's just gonna be problematic learn to love you know, learn to accept all 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 people, blah 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 blah. But for people listening now that have started to like realize there's something really wrong in this narrative and it's not in our best interest. What 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 should they do or what can they do? Perhaps I go first and just say yeah. you're not alone. You are not alone and you shouldn't feel uncomfortable in questioning the mainstream narrative because it's not until you do that your life just you you're never gonna find out who you are, right? If you stay in this fragile little box created by the mainstream, yeah. not question anything because you worry about like, well, what would my neighbor think of me? Well, your neighbor's probably a fucking dick. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, the same as yeah. most people these days, Lani, can't even say hello to each other. You're, you you know, know what? You're so right. I mean, look, after the last two years, I would say I lost half my friends because I was very outspoken about what I thought. Um, but I have found the most incredible other friends because of it. And that's one thing. People, you know, there were people from... My friends now are from all walks of life, all walks of life that I would never have met if it wasn't because of this, because I don't know whether I'd have been shot off to meet from meeting them or our paths would never have crossed, but our paths have crossed because of this. And so I've met the most amazing, wonderful, open-minded people. Um, so I think it's the same as you. And, and also don't, don't, don't be afraid, you know, and do your research seek out you know be around like-minded people that you can chat these things through with because it was funny I mean we mentioned David like privately before this I read his books I think it was pre that big event you discussed so I I was all I already felt things weren't right for me then and the I was a little bit different to a lot of people around me who were very interested in like fashion or material things. Um, I was always a little bit different, a little bit geeky and what have you. And I read this book and I was just like, wow, you know, things do seem, he seems to be able to describe things well. He's collated all this information. Um, you know, it's not all, first-hand information he's very good at, at, at like collating information and I'd read it and I was like then you know when that big event happened I was already like oh wow you know this is I wonder what he thinks about this 
um, and and the people that know about him, what they think about this, because there are a lot of aspects of this that don't make, you know, don't seem right. And, you know, there's another building falling. Well, nothing hit that. And, and where's the video from the Pentagon? That's weird. And then I, you know, I did my own kind of research. But again, at that time, I was still quite quiet because I was modelling and it would have been weird for me to be talking to the page three girls about this stuff because they would have thought I was an absolute loon. So <laughs> sure, just as people do now. So, you know, <laughs> for, for, I'd say for 20 years, I just, you know, kept quite quiet or whatever. But as soon as, you know, this was the big one for me because this was going to affect everybody's lives more than we could ever imagine as it as it has done. Um, and that's when, like, you know, that, that's when I thought, I don't care. You know, I'm 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 saying how I feel now and, and take it or leave it. But I think, you know, like you like you said, you should just yeah, don't don't be afraid. And 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 also the anger, the anxiety, the sadness that comes with knowing is normal. And if it wasn't there, I would have and you didn't feel any anger or sadness or anxiety over what you've learned. I would think you're not so you're a psycho. So I think it's very normal to have all of those feelings and like, God, what is going on and how do we get out of this and, and, and what do we do? And I think that's that's normal and it's you've got to tune into that. And also you can't be too angry about people that aren't ready for waking up yet because, you know, it's going to happen in that. Yes. Just tell a little story. I was going on a stag do, and there was a god. There was a lot of us. There was about thirty, and I was in this little group having a beer before we we went on our way. And 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 the la and I said to one of those group, where, um, I won't say the chap's name. But let's just, <laughs> where, 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 where's Charlie? Oh, Charlie's on his way. You know, we. He said we've got Charlie back. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he become one of them conspiracy theorists, didn't he? I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like he was saying that, you know, the events of, the, and, and, and I'm, I'm going, <laughs> all right, okay. Yeah. And then Charlie rocks up to the do, and I just, I'm like, make a beeline for him, you know? I'm like, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah. mate, what's all this bullshit that, that apparently they, they've cured you of this, and, and he's like, oh, Chris, I know, but like they all believe. And I'm like, mate, fucking don't kowtow. Stay, yeah. you are you, stay strong. What you know, you cannot take back now. You know that. Yeah. So, and you know that I know it. And yet you're going, oh, slope, slope shoulders <laughs> here because I want to be one of the lads. What, what, what kind of fucking the lads is that being a part of? Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, be like fucking Tarzan. Be, be a bloody hero to people, not... Yeah. Lilani, listen, um, I just want to finish on something a little bit more um, beautiful. Uh, 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 and I love travelling, as I said to you earlier. I've, tra I've travelled a lot, and I had literally... I met a girl in uh, Manila in the Philippines. I never, ever will forget that night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, oh geez like literally just one of the most memorable beautiful nights i think that like i ever 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 had and you mentioned your mother is philip Fili what do you say filipino filipino yeah a filipino. i think i meant to say filipino actually but yeah. i just say filipino yeah <laughs> well i i met lots of um Filipinos in working in Hong Kong because they they make up the biggest um, ethnic you know minority there because they do a lot of the chauffeur the men do driving and security yeah. the girls uh, do a lot of nannying work and this sort of stuff um, I, they really looked after me in Hong Kong I I had a big group of Filipino Filipina friends i.e. women. Used to we used to gather on a Sunday and they'd cook fish and fish and rice and <laughs> great food. I I love it. I lo I just love all, all I love all that stuff. I loved it. 
that they were so happy just drinking Coca-Cola. You know, they didn't need to get pissed or take drugs. Yeah. They were just like so happy. Put some disco music on, boom, like the room <laughs> that everyone just just starts bopping. It, it was a very, very special time in my life. Um, I feel very fortunate to, to, to have visited the, the Philippines. I'm looking at, I've got a map up there on the wall. Um, have Have you been there? I have. I went when I was sixteen. Yeah, I haven't been. Haven't been since quite a while. I haven't been since. But was it, how was that? Like, can you um, say connecting with your roots? Or, or yeah, do you know what? It was very eye opening for me because when you um, I don't know if it, I can't remember now if it was Manila or I think it was Manila. You come out of Manila Airport across the river, and it was the smell was so bad because there's people like living on this Mm -hmm. river and you know they're washing in it but they're also going to the bathroom in it and jumping their rubbish in it and it it was really hard for me seeing all the 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 really bad poverty and then we went into manila and we stayed at quite a nice hotel and did the typical filipino thing with about 100 of us in a room (laughs) And um, my dad wasn't there. It was my mum, my auntie, me, my cousins, whatever. Um, and actually, I, then I saw a lady, a first load of lady boys, because they had lady boys before them. This is like 30 years ago, right? So, um, and that's funny to me because, you know, they're, they're not trying to tell you their pronouns or they're not trying to tell you that they are women and you must believe they're women or you're a transphobe bigot. Right, they are just themselves, men dressed up, dancing around as women, um, and yeah, not not forcing their beliefs on you. And then that that's all. I, and then we went to my mum's island, and again, I just I the, seeing like the poverty was quite hard, but yeah, no, it, but you know what happy people because they haven't been they're not materialistic it's not about what they have you know but community isn't it people yeah community and love yes yes wasn't palawan by any chance was it your no she's from bacalod city uh okay palawan was i i flew from manila to um palawan which is one one of the many many islands that make up the philippines and and then I, I was very fortunate. I booked myself a stay on this tiny, tiny little island. It, it just had a, a guest house and that was it. And uh, um, uh, just, yes, yeah, just incredible, incredible. The the, the rich tapestry of life. Um, yeah. Yes. Lilani, stay on the line so I can thank you properly. But okay. just for the purpose of the recording, you've been absolutely wonderful. Um you've really you've made my christmas this is just Aww. well you know anyone that stands up for the kids you get a thumbs up in my book you know you really really do and and to use your beautiful persona and 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 and, and you know you, you you put a lot on the line to tell the truth folks you 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 really do and i don't think a lot of people understand i bet you've come under some awful stupid stuff on twitter and the like and 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 that's just life unfortunately but i'm just absolutely honored that you've you've joined us on the bought the t-shirt podcast um there's an open invitation anytime you want to come back and i really hope you will thank you Um, i'd love to yes and just keep keep being yourself and being that shining example to other young other well to our to our young people well to all our Not people that young anymore. <laughs> yes but i know a lot of young women will look up to you you know and they will be um yeah you know, formulating their their understanding of life and i think it's great to have a such a strong role model to you know thank you thank, thank you thank you massive thank you again to matt hoy matt much love to you mate and thank you thank you thank you for putting us in touch to everybody out there big big love to you i hope your christmas has been utterly incredible keep telling your truth 
keep turning off that bloody mainstream news and um, we'll see you next time. <laughs>